Good evening, everyone. How do I bear much fruit or more fruit? Do I want to bear uh, more fruit? Uh, what are we really talking about when we're talking about uh, fruit in general uh, with regards to the scriptures? Well, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Let's take a review of the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, we heard the message in the gospel, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Okay, again, a reminder, why are we reviewing? Because we're trying to challenge ourselves. We're trying to challenge, not just that we remember two weeks ago, but really, did the gospel of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the word, and also the sacrament that accompanied it, did it have any effect in our life? So uh, it's a good chance to really challenge ourselves. So again, the gospel is go out to all the world, tell the good news. And uh, we looked at that as a litmus, a litmus test. There's a litmus test for God's love being active in your life. Is God's love active in your life? Uh, certainly, if I asked you, well, do you believe in God? Yes, Father. Uh, do you love God? Yes, Father. Do you know that uh, God loves you? Yes, Father. So, but is, is the love of God active in our lives? One of the litmus tests is have you shared it? lately. So have you shared your faith in a sincere way, um, or was it something begrudging to do? Or is it something that's natural, that's fluid, that kind of, you know, you're impelled to share something about the faith? I want to I encourage people to come to Mass, uh, or I, I, wanna, I want them to come to the Bible study, or I want, I want you to join us in the choir, whatever it is. I want to engage in a conversation where a topic came up in, in a paper or on a TV show. So have you talked about your faith to somebody? Could be a family member, could be somebody uh, outside the family. But that's a pretty good litmus test on whether or not the love of God is active in your life. Okay? It's there in an objective way through baptism faith, hope, and charity, those capacities are in all of us. The very indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The, the point is, is it active? Is God active in your life? There's the litmus test. Uh, if, if the flame was once great and now is, has died, uh, or if we've never known that type of active love from God, and cultivate that habit of praying, Lord, I invite you back into my heart, or Lord, I invite you to, to show me this love that others talk about. Cultivate that every single day, uh, then God is going to answer our prayers. So last week we celebrated Good Shepherd Sunday, and uh, we looked at the three tenets of a good shepherd. Number one, sacrifice. Uh, the gospel says, lay down your life for, uh, for the sheep. The second element was that the shepherd knows every single sheep. So he knows those who, and by the way, you know, the question is, are you a good shepherd? See, if you have somebody in your care in some regard, you have some sort of responsibility. Could be, you could have a child, you have a nephew, a niece, you could... Uh, you could have you know, somebody that is in your care, uh, even at work. So are you a good shepherd is the question. Again, good shepherd sacrifices. A good shepherd knows his sheep, not just the name, but what's going on in their lives. And the third tenant is a good shepherd cares about those who don't care. All right, so I talked a little bit more about that first element uh, and sacrificing. Sacrificing specifically, a good shepherd will uh, identify our attachments. Our attachments could be the sin, could be to something good, but whatever it is, it's keeping us from being the shepherd that God is calling us to be. Uh, last week, again, Good Shepherd Sunday, it's really a time to highlight vocations to the priesthood, to the consecrated life. Uh, so we always pray for all vocations, but in particular, those two. The reality is, uh, it is much easier, it is much easier to say yes to a marriage vocation than to one of priesthood 
and consecrated life. The actual living out of, of the priestly life or the consecrated life and then the marriage life, the sacrifices are about the same. They're different. But it, it's, you know, one life isn't much uh, more difficult or challenging than the others. All right? They, they each have their, their challenges and difficulties and their great joys. So they, they balance out. But the reality is it is much more difficult to, to discern and to say yes to a priestly or a consecrated vocation. Why? Because of the current milieu that we're in. And so there should be that encouragement, hopefully. Now, uh, I would say uh, for myself, and I share this briefly, it wasn't so much attachments to money that, that kept me from moving along and saying yes to a vocation to the priesthood. So I, I certainly had an opportunity and offer of a job uh, well over uh, in six figures. It wasn't so much the money that tempted me. All right. So from an early adult age, uh, in tw when I was 20 years old, I, I learned of, uh, an understanding of tithing, and I've tithed since then. And as a result, finances do not possess me. Now, the difficulty that I did have was entering uh, into formation because I, I always thought that I would be married and have children. And although that is a good, for me, it was something that I couldn't let go of. And uh, r really, it, it kept me from, from entering when really the Lord was calling. And instead, I, I pursued a job until I got that job. I pursued a relationship, and uh, everything was there. And now all of a sudden, I couldn't get beyond the unrest that was in my heart. I would have been happy as a married person or as a, a biological father, as a somebody with a career. I would have been happy, but I would not have been at peace. And that ultimately is what God wants. What's the glory of God? A person fully alive. So he has created you with a purpose in mind. He's placed that purpose in your heart and your, your vocation is simply uncovering the deepest desire and following it. So uh, here I was at that point, and uh, I entered seminary, but somehow still was not letting go, uh, still, still holding on. And uh, it wasn't until the second semester, and was before the Blessed Sacrament, and I really encourage you, if you have any questions at all, in your life, and in particular with regards to vocation, that you spend time before the Blessed Sacrament, hours. And especially uh, before the, the Blessed Sacrament exposed in adoration. Because it was there uh, that I had this, this great realization that I was not supposed to marry this girl. Now, I know that that sounds a little ridiculous. I'm in second year, or second semester in seminary, and I'm still holding on. Okay. I'm not talking about uh, appearances. I'm talking about our heart. So on the appearance, I am fully engaged uh, in um, formation and in my academics, and I'm moving forward, but in my heart, I'm holding on until I had that realization before the Blessed Sacrament, and then I, could, and then I would really be able to let go. As I shared with you last week, um, I was able to share that with, uh, with a young lady, and it was good for her, because now she could move on as well. She was holding on, and once I was able to share with her uh, that I had that, that realization, she was able to let go, and she, she was called to something else. She was called to marriage uh, with another person. I was called to the priesthood. As I shared last week, she has six kids. I got the better deal. Okay, anyways. So um, the reality is, is that what, is, what, is, what are you holding on to? Whether it's small or, or, or big, like I was holding on to. Is it, what are you holding on to that's, help, that's holding you back from being the good shepherd that you are called to be? Now, we come to today, a very clear 
in the gospel, if you want to bear much fruit, remain in me. It's just like a, 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 the branch uh, and the vine. Okay, you have to remain in me in order to bear much fruit. Well, what fruit are we talking about? We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so there, there are 12 of them. Do any of these sound uh, like you might want more of this? Joy, peace, patience, kindness. I think that's excellent that as soon as I said patience, somebody's car alarm certainly went off. All right, perfect. Yes, Lord, I want more patience. Kindness, goodness, Now there's two of them going off. Now, I did not pray for patience, by the way. Don't do that because he will lavish you with opportunities. Goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness. Again, you're thinking to yourself, do I need more of this type of thing? Modesty, self-control, chastity. So these are the fruits of the Spirit. And he says, if you remain in me, then you're going to bear much fruit. So, well, uh, how do we remain in the Lord? What, what, are, the, what are the things that, that really are, are going to separate us? Certainly, in a very real way, real way being disconnected from the Lord. In other words, is there grave sin in my life that has not been confessed? So if we have grave sin and it hasn't been confessed, then there's going to be a disconnect. There might be prosperity in some ways in our life, but ultimately we're not going to see uh, the abundance of fru fruit in, in the areas that I just shared. So again, the first way is just simply being disconnected, and that is grave sin. We know it's grave, and we had full possession of our will. The, the other thing is just being disinterested, okay? Um, I, I'm tired. Um, there's a car alarm persisting. Uh, there is the other types of things where we end up being disengaged. All right, so we're, we're in disengaged from, uh, you know, what, what God is offering to us. So disconnected through sin, disengaged maybe through, you know, a sense of sloth. And the last one is disregard. So here, in a sense, the disregard that we would have for the Lord um, is the, the experience, well, here, I'll give you an example, a very practical one. If you go to somebody's house and you share a meal with them, and as they are clearing the table, you leave. You don't say goodbye. You don't say anything else. They're, they have fed you. They're clearing the table, and you just get up and walk out. So here, that's a relevant analogy for receiving communion and then just simply leaving. Okay. Well, I don't want to sit through the announcements and other types of things. Well, or it's part of being a part of the community. Not only that, but there is real grace in, in, the, in the last blessing, and there is a, a reiteration of being sent out. And, you know, we are on a mission. And that's what we're doing here. We're experiencing the word and the sacrament, the embrace of God that's strengthening us so that we can go out and be his presence. So ultimately, again, how are we going to bear much fruit? It's communion with the Lord. And how do we, how do we access that grace? Because we receive communion objectively. If you come forward and you receive, you receive that grace and that embrace. But how, how am I accessing that grace? 
Well, if we're disconnected because of sin, we're not going to access it and we're not going to bear fruit. If we're disengaged, we might receive it objectively, but again, uh, we're, we're not really going to connect and bear fruit. Uh, and in fact, if we have disregard, if we're receiving him and then running, how are we really taking in the grace there? So, do you want to bear fruit? Which fruit are we talking about? We're talking about fruit of the Spirit. Again, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. Beautiful fruits of the Spirit. If you remain in me, says the Lord, then you will bear much fruit.